today we are going to be discussing our newest product, the sliding screen door. Well, I'm just going to play a short video um, of somebody um, installing the product before I hand it over to Dave. Here we go. Um, the, the, the background is pretty obvious why we, we have a door now. It's only taken us 20 years, but uh, uh, we were happy to, to focus on our product, the legacy screenies and the newest product, SnapTrack. But uh, the door really rounded out the package. It rounded out the system. So it was important to get that accomplished as soon as possible. Um, as soon as possible, it did take 20 years, and it's actually taken about three years. Uh, I blame a little bit of it on COVID, but uh, the fact is, is we wanted a door that complemented uh, the product that we have, which is a, a very, very uh, reliable uh, construction product. And we wanted a door to match it. We wanted it to match in performance and um, appearance. So we began with a door that needed the screenies profile extruded in the rails and styles. So that was a huge consideration. It comes in all four colors. We decided to uh, make it American made. So it's um, it's a tad more costly, but it's a very, very durable door. And um, we wanted a door that was totally different than what's on the market. So uh, thanks to a customer who took a standard screen door and uh, he had a situation where he needed a barn door style opening. So from that spawned the idea of making a door rather than a retractable or a conventional hinge door, we decided to do a sliding door, but with a complete bug seal on all four sides, which presented some problems. We ended up with a ball bearing glide and um, uh, that was uh, integral to it. These next few pictures go through and help us with the um, a little bit of what you'll see, but you see the ball bearing glide there. It's a 403 stainless steel. You get a good shot of the weather stripping, which uh, is continuous on all four sides, top, bottom, left, right, and um, how it installs. So that's a three part track and um, uh, part attaches to the door, part attaches to the frame. For ease of installation, the corner keys are actually installed on the um, styles, top and bottom. They're left a little bit loose and it's a slotted opening. So it gives you a little, little room for adjustment when you're putting the um, um, rails on because it is a snug fit. If you've ever taken apart a screen door, you know it's a very, very tight fit. So this gives you a little, little play room. But your very first step after uh, finding a good level work surface to work on is to install the weather strip that you see right here. So the weather strip goes in on all four sides and then you'll start to marry the corner key uh, that's in the uh, style to the rail. Everything is pre-drilled, so it's relatively simple. It should line up very nicely as you see in the top right picture there. The next step is to put on the screen and uh, after your door is together, you cut your vinyl caps and um, install the screen. The door itself is an inch by three and a half. It's a little over an inch. It's about an inch and an eighth by three and a half. Uh, so that's, it's a good solid door, but the hinging mechanism, we'll call it, which is the glide, attaches to the face of the, the top rail. And as that is disassembled that you'll see here in a little bit, that attaches to the door header, the structure, then they're remarried together and it just slides back and forth uh, like a drawer glide. It's a very heavy duty drawer glide is what it boils down to. 
Next, you see the, the beginning, uh, if you open your box, you'd see the installation instructions, and uh, we, will, we will suggest to you that you read through beginning to end. Uh, that's a very nice picnic table that served as this installation. It's, it's a good, solid, flat work surface, and you want that when you're installing or, or when you're building the door. So we ran through that real quick, but uh, you have a sheet here on the left that'll show you every component that's involved. So you basically have everything but your tools and labor uh, in the carton, in the shipping carton. It's a nice double wall box. Um, and obviously it's a, it's a KD door since we're talking about building it, but you should have everything in the box and read through things. And there's videos available. So familiarize yourself as much as possible, at least on your first, first go around. As we discussed earlier, your first step is to install the uh, weather stripping. So we've done that. The next thing that you're really going to address is um, one of the items that you install is, is a little thing called a slip stick, which you see in step four here. And it's a little silicone button that, that we hold on. Um, uh, one of the corner key screws actually secures it to the, to the door frame. But you want that on the leading edge of the door and the, the door is going to glide left or right, whether it's on the inside or outside. So if it's going to glide to the right, then you would want this on the leading edge of the door uh, going away to your right. So um, in this particular case, where it's shown there is just about where it would be. This is a, a little tool that will be available soon, but it's, it's a great tool for just cutting the vinyl. It gives a really accurate cut. And, uh, and that's important when you're doing this. It's got a PVC cap. PVC grows and shrinks according to the weather. We give you dimensions to cut the, the length to, but take into consideration the temperature when you're cutting it. So if it's freezing cold outside, you know this is about as, as short as it's going to uh, contract to. If it's really hot, it's probably as long as it's ever gonna be. So kind of take that into consideration when you're installing the screenies. We're installing the screen fabric. It's different because it's in a horizontal position instead of vertical. So with this, you actually have to tug on the screen a little bit, but it's still do the top rail, do the bottom, and then um, then do your sides. And you will have to stretch it a little bit. But same principle, if you, if you, if you don't get some ridges after you put on your second cap, uh, you, you might wanna pull it off at this point, tighten it up a little bit more and reinstall that cap. Okay, so now we have a completely assembled door. We have the, the cap on, the slip stick screwed in, all the corner keys are nice and tight. Everything looks true. We've checked it diagonally. And your next step is there's uh, three kind of categories. You're, you're, you're building the door, then you're attaching the door to your structure, then you're installing the remaining hardware to, to operate the door. I'm not going to go through every little nitty gritty here, but I will point out that in this step nine, uh, you separate the, the glide base from the, the glide with just a little black clip you'll see when you, when you extend it out. And then, then at that point, you're determining if you're going left or right on your door, inside or outside. The door header itself is completely pre-drilled. So if you're going to do a glide right, the holes are there for a glide right. If you're going to do a glide left, all the necessary holes are pre-drilled for a glide left. So you're installing the moving part to the door header and the little flat base is what goes to the door jam. And that's what you see in step 11. So these two are critical. Obviously you want to read it through, think it through, but once your moving part is installed in your header and your fixed piece with a clip is installed on your jam, uh, the next step is to marry them together. A little side note here, we talk about this step 11. Uh, what you want to do when you're installing this piece is take into consideration the slope of your floor. If your floor is a little bit out of level, you want to put this in on each leg, the 81 and a half inches from the finished floor, not not level, not 81 and a half inches and then level. If it's out a quarter of an inch, you want this to mirror that quarter of an inch difference. When the door goes, the door's put on there and it glides back and forth. You take advantage of that 
because you want the door to go to the low side, the slope, obviously, so it doesn't hit. If it has to go to the high side, you really want to use this to your advantage. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your first install. Okay, this shows the track installed on the, the uh, header rail and the fixed track installed on the, uh, this is a glide right. So you can see over here on the left, that little lip tongue on that is five eighths of an inch beyond the jam. And then this is 81 and a half inches from the finished floor as this is 81 and a half inches from the finished floor. So you just wanna keep that in mind as you, as you proceed. Okay, so now we're, we're going to join the, 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 the door back together with the hinge. So you simply align it, pull the, the movable, the roller part of the bearing out a little bit, hook it onto the base plate, and then just gently slide it over. And it'll get about, about two thirds of the way on once it hits about the, the, where the clip is, and it'll tighten up a little bit. Just place your hand up here at the top and just, just push it over a little bit and it'll just go in. And at that point, it's locked in and it'll just go back and forth. Okay, so now we have a door. It should slide back and forth very nicely. If it doesn't, you wanna go back and check whatever little nuance there might be for adjustment, but this is the time to make that adjustment. Okay, the, re the remainder of this is installing the hardware parts. You have a threshold, you have a 36 inch and a 70 inch, you have a door pole and you have a lock and you have the door stops. Actually, I have to back up a little bit. After you install this second part of the, uh, the door glide, before you install the door at the base, well, I'll just go back a couple. Step 13, there's a 36 inch uh, threshold and you can see in profile here in the section, it installs flush with the face of your door opening. So you want to install that and that's where your door's going to ride and that's where the weather strip's gonna ride on that point. So now I'll go back to step 15. This is your 70 inch threshold. The first thing you wanna do is make sure there's no dings or dents in it. The second thing is you wanna make sure it's completely clean of any, any debris, any dust, anything that might have gathered on there prior to installing the self-sticking weather strip. The weather strip goes on the top of the threshold you can see the little blue arrow I'm pointing at. That's where you want this to stick. Uh, this really serves no function other than to help the door stay in place. It kind of makes it windproof and it helps it glide back and forth. Uh, so it's a nice smooth motion. You don't hear metal against metal. Once that's installed, uh, step 16 are the stops. And uh, step 17 is a, a template kind of driven door pull. It's actually a push. We didn't want a, a pull because we don't want people to pull on this door because we want them to instinctively see that bar and know that it slides left and right. And then the optional lock uh, is the remaining function. And this can work on it left, right, interior, exterior. We did have a question. Approximately how long does it take the door to put together? If you're uh, skilled with tools, uh, I would say the first time around would probably be uh, an hour to an hour and a half, depending upon the materials you're working with. If you're going into concrete, it's going to take a little longer to drill into it. I would say on average, we had a couple of these installed by a local contractor in the testing area, and we built quite a few of them here in the, in the shop. Uh, I would say it's probably about a 45 minute operation, start to finish. It's, it, it really goes rather smoothly. The, the door itself, probably 30 minutes, including putting on the screen. And then the rest just kind of depends on what materials you might be dealing with. Like I said, if you're going into decking, it's gonna go faster if it's concrete. Uh, it's gonna take you a little longer on the pilot holes. But uh, uh, I would say on average, if I was estimating it, I'd probably put in an hour and a half and that allows for getting it out of the box, uh, cleanup adjustments. On the other end, if I'm looking at the uh, the, the bidding process, uh, once a guy does two or three of them, I'd probably use 45 minutes. There's just a couple of photographs. Uh, upper right is the threshold with the uh, weather strip attached. 
here's Bill installing the threshold or the, the weather stripping. We'll photograph with the uh, the door bump comes with a, li a little bump and it's actually covers this end cap. We saw it early on. It would be a, a place where people might catch their, their toe or foot and that would not feel good. So uh, the end cap actually has a little bit of a bevel on it. So you'll slide over it. Some photographs illustrating a few odds and ends. Door pull going on. A picture of an interior and exterior. So with that, that pretty much concludes my part of this rodeo.